live on PDC TV and Arena 4 brought to you by PDC Europe. Time to meet our next two contenders. Please welcome from Australia with one player's championship title to his name. He is the reigning Brisbane Darts Masters champion, the Heat Damon Hedgehog! And his opponent from Wales, a two-time back-to-back Grand Slammer Darts champion, the reigning world Grand Prix champion, the reigning world number one, and the reigning champion of the world, the Iceman, Gerwin Price! Now Mr. Point is jumping, with the base kicked in and the leg is on one big Tempo. I'm on a roll, it's time to go solo, rolling, with my box and hold, with my rack top down so my hair can blow, the girl ain't gonna stand by, but he's gonna say hi, this is no, I just roll my hair to Here on the final day of the Hungarian Darts Trophy, the big three, Gerwin Price, Peter Wright and Michael Van Gerwen, one of them has had a bye through to the quarterfinals tonight, one of them has been knocked out already. And the third, the Iceman, is on stage right now, looking to move through to the last eight. He stands up against Damon Hetter, who will be lining up for Australia at the World Cup of Darts next week. And these two have got a bit of history. Five times they've met. Five times Gerwin Price has won, but it has not been as dominant as you might think. In fact, their most recent meeting was one of two finals they played against each other on the Pro Tour. Damon Hetter was first to six legs. He was first to seven legs. Fortunately for Damon, he lost 8-7. It was one of the greatest comebacks I have ever seen in this sport. Gary Price, who won six of the last seven legs, averaging more than 120 in the process. That has got to sting for the Australian. Can he get a bit of revenge, register his first win over the Iceman? and book his place in the quarterfinals to take on Brendan Dolan. Could have been Michael Van Gerwen. He missed four match darts. Alongside me to talk you through the gentlemen. Iceman versus first the Heat. First going to throw first. Game on. It is the reigning Eddie Cox Memorial Champion, Paul Nicholson. Thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> Ten and a bit years ago that was, but we were jogged in our memory department because of the fact that Demo was introduced as the reigning Brisbane Darts Masters champion. That is, of course, accurate. Mm -hmm. But only if we go back will someone potentially take the crown. He oh, said that Mike Smith might be the Shanghai Darts Master forever. Forever? Could be. Yeah, you never know. We were there for that comeback in their previous meeting in 2021. Oh, it was quite stupendous. I mean, Damon Hedder was playing so well at the start of the game. Like you say, he was first to six. And that's what you have to do in this format. So we'll be hoping to replicate that. But the strength of the, the price delivered for that title in the final seven legs, it was a whirlwind. It was. I mean, the other final they played, which was 41. back in November, Gezi won that 8-6. So it's not as if Damon hasn't been getting very close to beating him. He just hasn't quite got over the line. But if he's looking for inspiration on how to beat a world number one when you keep getting close and not managing to do it. Maybe just have a look at Gerwin Price because he used to do Mr. Michael Van Gerwen over and over again. It took him a dozen times. He used to get annihilated by him over and over again. Then he started getting a few legs against him. Then he Ninety-five. missed match darts against him. got a draw against him in the Premier And then he finally learned to beat him. You could see the relief on the face of... Gerwin Price when he got that victory as well. But I remember the pain on the face of Hedda 
and he lost that final because 42. he was in the palm of his hand. I think that really hurt him. So right now it's all about what he does here. I like the fact that he's got the name of the tournament on his shirt as well at the back there. That could be a nice keepsake for somebody or indeed for himself. 24. Four. That seems to be a trend that Dave Chisnell started with his shirt putting the name of the tournament on the back. This is one of those shots where getting the treble doesn't really help you that much. You've still got to get a treble to get to the outer ring or the bullseye. But it does help when you're opponents north of 170. Yeah, I mean, it, you, if they're not on a finish, you don't have to go for the 18s anyway. Just stick a couple in treble 20. You've been thrown at it all leg. But he is going to get a couple of darts to break the price. 54. Price started slowly yesterday against Veinstra before putting in another decent comeback. That's a missed... Big number from Damon Etto. He's making a pig's ear of this. Joe Cullen did this earlier. Yeah, he's on the first leg. Got the two 11s for the 32. Second leg, Damon to throw it first. It's indeed a break of throw. Game on. I've got to say one thing, though. We've been here for a couple of days and a little bit more. I can't remember the last time I saw so many missed singles on the left-hand side of the board. We've seen missed nines. We've almost seen a busted 25 by Brendan oh, Dolan. But the amount of times I've seen... 14 and 9 miss this week. Extraordinary. Here's a curious one. 60. Throughout his career, the Iceman has used the same kit. And the paintwork on his barrel has been blue. Very reminiscent of his nickname, of course. 100. Are you a fan of the change? I think it might have been the day he won the title against Dave. That might have been the first day he was using them. It was certainly they were certainly very new at the time, or it was that week, I think. But Price, he, he said himself, "Look, they are new darts, but the color, that's the only thing that's changed really. There's no massive changes to the grip or the weight or the setup. Just weird, though. Dart players are funny creatures." Six doesn't pick up a title in the next six weeks. Don't be surprised to see the return of the white flights. We shall see. He's certainly second best at the moment. Oh, 135. Good break of throw. Took advantage of a slow start from Price. This is good protection. 140. From David Hatter, leaving 32 to 12. 32. Somewhat resigned approach shot there from Gezi. Expecting Hetter to take a 2 0 lead. That's pretty awkward. He might have to go low and risk the bust shot here. Yeah, that is extremely accurate. Yeah, if you stopped these two Ooh, nice games halfway through yesterday. You'd have probably thought this might be Simon Whitlock versus Richard Vainstra because they were both in charge of those contests before Hetter mounted a comeback and Price did the same. I have to say, Damon's comeback was largely helped by Whitlock, who missed three clear darts at double two Six. legs running when it, I think that might have been game over had he pinned either of those legs. Yeah, Whitlock could have won that one quite comfortably. Hey, he really like that guy in the crowd, though, with the hat with the rue on it. So, Damo, you've got supporters here. But the order this afternoon, even though there are thousands here, I have to oh, thank you, sir. aside what happened in the price match last night, say that Hungary has given us a great venue, great order, 40. a great first tournament. Yeah, I, I, they haven't booed price. Now, I don't know if it's just that the Hungarian fans haven't quite worked themselves up. They're not, not fully oiled up. For the day's play. They oh, certainly got louder as the day got on yesterday, and it was the evening session when they were the rowdiest, perhaps predictably. Well, you once told me when you went to the Premier League in Fair Berlin indeed. that a lot of that huge crowd at the arena didn't really know what to do. They hadn't got the no. hang of the dart songs or anything like that, but on return they got more in tune with it. Maybe with this Hungarian crowd, they're amazingly respectful, 40. but. They haven't Going got the hang of some of the 40. stock dart songs yet, but I like it this way. Because it will get louder if this goes in. 130. Well, he's going to get more darts for the leg when he returns, Garen Price. 
just love that little clap there. That was almost reminiscent of going to see the symphony. 44. Very nice. Very nice cello solo there. Gettering Price is looking for the crescendo to leg number three. No score. This is the naught. Damien Rivoire, 164. Die. Oh, 190. I'm just marvelling at the fact that he got Going that 57 under ten. the other dot. I didn't think there was any room left. Double five. Comes yeah, to his ear five. once again. Going Very problems. reminiscent of when Although he won the world title. The first when he missed game. multiple darts. But ultimately gets the job done in that leg on double five. Two one header. Oh, 134. Interesting dynamic going into the World Cup now that Hetter has beaten Whitlock in the week leading up to it. I'm sure those guys are going to gel next week. Who's your favourite? Are you going for Wales like a lot of people? I, I mean, I, I have to say, I, I really, as I said yesterday, I really do like the look of the Dutch team with Dirk van Dijvenboerder and MVG. I know we've seen MVG fail to win a tournament again today, but I thought it looked pretty good. 57. And Dirk is on a six-game losing streak and looked pretty poor yesterday but I still think that that's going to be a very exciting team to watch I feel like the Canadians though yeah I am all over Canada I think the chemistry between Matt Campbell and Jeff Smith and especially with what's going on today with Matt Campbell we'll touch on that in a second but I am going to put my hat on right now and I am Northern. going to say I said this two years ago egg on face after round one I'm going to go for Northern Ireland there you go I think Gurney and Dolan have chemistry and I think they're due a big run. There you go, Paul Nicholson. Hat on head, egg on face. And nailing his colours to the Northern Ireland mass now. What's oh, okay, fair play. He's actually called this Nicholson, to be fair. He said that the white flights would be making a return. I'm not sure he thought they'd be making a return halfway through leg four, but <laughs> you've been proven correct sooner than I thought. Oh, Dark players are funny, funny creatures. Black flights, white flights, you might think there's no difference. His whole career, he has liked to see the flight. In that 60 bed, he's not going to see that flight. He needs the guide. So the white flights have returned, and they were in the case. So that says something to me. Damon Uruguay, 76. Damon Hatter. 16 for tops. For a 3 1 lead. Yeah. And the Australian and has got Damon half Hatter. the legs he needs the legs to beat the first. world number Game. one for the first time in his career. This is a world number one who currently is averaging 74. 140. I'm not sure I've ever seen the numbers 74, 77 it is now next to Gerwin Price's name. Unless it was sort of amount of prize money in thousands won that month. You would probably think that was his doubles percentage. Yeah. 96. But this is a game where improvement can be found. And we do, of course, have the evidence that All he can rally, But he doesn't have as many legs to, to work with in this game. Just to touch on the challenge tour, which is taking place, of course, in two locations this weekend it does come to a climax this afternoon and this evening 58 and Matt Campbell of Canada that you mentioned in the last leg he's in the box seat for that tour card world championship spot and One grand slam day. spot but on the other side of the English channel Martin Thomas who's currently in a semi-final with Jason Hogg of Scotland if he wins that and makes the final he will go to the top of the order of merit over Jim Williams. 140. Going to require 86. They're still pretty tight in the UK rankings, though. Price. The 12 darter. 54. He's going to get more darts, but it took him low. Seven. Oh, 133. Ford, to take Going as many darts 32. as last time to hit this double. 
Cam shot off the legs. Cam in front. Not just the flights that have changed. Cam is dead with the first. The old darts as well, which admittedly we've just said the colour's the only difference, but. Sometimes you need a bit of a security blanket. And we have seen players change mid-game. Some not, players yeah. multiple times. Yes, Peter Wright, I'm talking about you. And I think this is the first time I've seen Gezi do it. But let's face it, since he's picked him up, he's changed. A better player. He's absolute placebo nonsense. So the same darts, just a different colour. And Gary Price has got it. Oh, Ninety-three. This is, this is the magic thing, the keys to the kingdom, and it's working. Oh, oh I thought he was going to be on the nine again. I did say that he is glad that he didn't hit it. And in an interview with someone, he also said he was tempted to go for a big four. <laughs> well. Somebody also said that it was oh, nice reminiscent of a Ronnie O'Sullivan 147 where he was tempted to not go for the black. Well, let's face facts. Gerwin Price wants to be in the quarterfinals tonight. He wants to oh, pick up another European Tour title in September. Because when it comes to September on the Euro Tour, he's pretty efficient. He's won a couple of times. The other one was in February of last year in the Belgian Darts Championship. Twelve. And from the sixth leg, the price rock. Seven legs, Gerwin for a first. The world number one finds himself level at three all, despite having to change his darts and throw in some very, very average stuff. I mean, he's averaging 86 at the minute, but he has got the darts in hand, throwing in leg seven, looking to go into the lead. Don't know if you've been on stage when he's done one of those roars, Dan, but I can guarantee you from experience it's very loud. Well, they'll be letting off some frustration there, but it's also just letting you know I've played rubbish for the last 10 minutes here, and I am still throwing to go into the lead. And he'll know. Look, Gowin Price, as we said earlier, having spent so long trying and failing to get his first win over Michael Van Gogh and he'll know what it feels like when there's some big bully in the playground and he keeps punishing you over and over and over and no, over again. Seven. Whatever you do, no matter how many you're getting max darts and you're not hitting them, you just can't beat this guy. And he'll know how frustrating it is and he'll know how it actually builds up and it Six. makes it very, very hard just to get over that hurdle for the first time. He'll know exactly how Damon had his feeling about playing playing him. So so use it. So much of these games is about psychology and making your opponent feel as bad as possible. Make it as well, hard for them as you can. It's almost as if to say that Damon's got to find a little bit of a nasty streak when he plays Gerwin Price and maybe fight fire with a no, little bit of so. fire. But Damon's not like that. He's a focused animal. He's super chilled. And he's going to play the game the way he has done for the last two or three years. Because that is a recipe for success. But the big role that Gary Price does have in his locker, it's not so much about what he's done, it's about getting rid of frustration and making himself feel better. 120. Well, opportunities are taken. Well, 104. Opportunities like this, you might see a bit of animation from Damo if he finds 18 and double 16. This is right in his wheelhouse. Double 16. 88. Going to require 40. He can't let Gerwin Price have three darts in his hand looking at tops. Can you? Further and further away. Bobby doubles three out of 16. 16 on the doubles, Gerwin Price. What a bonus for Damon Hedder. A bonus yeah, which is cashed in. Damon Hatter. That is a break of throw. Damon so the first. Expected one for Damo. He has to use it. And Price is slightly exasperated there. Last night, when someone was ejected from the building for whistling 
during his attempts at doubles. Price was not shy in staring down that yes, you know. But as far as that last effort is concerned, he wasn't afraid to blame himself because he knows he was responsible. 100. We can't blame the darts anymore. Go and change back to the other set. Just keep chopping and changing till you find out which ones work. Well, the other ones worked on double five. <laughs> You've got your double five darts and yeah, your treble 20 darts. Oh. Sorted. Let's not talk about that possibility of Peter Wright having scoring darts and doubling darts. He's genuinely considered it. As long as you only throw the three, there's no rule to say that you can have one three odd day. darts. Peter Manley used to use uh, barrels with one anomaly dart. It was about two or three grams heavier. Well, when Rob Cross first started out, there were two and a half grams difference between his heaviest 133. darts. 133. Using them for so many years. There's a hush here at the Pat Blasco. 91. Really enjoying this afternoon. They're engrossed. I think now that Michael Van Gerwen is out of it, everybody wants to know who's going to step up. 140. Going to 170. Can't produce the game changing. 170. 50 He's not tidy this up. 50% on doubles, Damon Hetter, in this match so far. He's going to get one dart. 58. He the target he wanted. Going to go on. I'm amazed he didn't hesitate before he went for double six because he wasn't expecting to go for it. Single 18. Takes his time on tops. Yeah, just get the from. feeling that maybe Hetta Ninth leg is going to throw first. Not taking a bit of time on that double six. Might have just cost him, but boy, was that good. Game taking on. out that 112. Hanging on to this one by the skin of his teeth, and Damo's going to be saying to himself right now, can you just leave me alone? Well, the 85 checkout. Oh, under pressure, the 112 check out there under pressure. There's been a couple of great moments for Gerwin Price. That's all it's been. He's, he's looking so, so beatable here. There's nothing quite as frustrating as being up against a top dart player like Price, Wright, Taylor, MVG. Those types of people who have been at the top of the rankings, towards the top. They're not having a good game, but you're having a worse game. And you think, you were right there. If I'd averaged 94, 95, could have had you easily. But world champions, world number ones, and multiple major champions find a way when they're not playing their best stuff. And if this is a C game, forget about price, which I believe it is at the 87 average. Damon knows right now, without looking at stats, that he's there for the taking. He really is there for the taking. Not if, if Michael Van Gerwen had put in this sort of display statistically, I mean, this would be right down there in the doldrums, the worst stuff we've seen from him in the last 18 months when he has experienced it. 59. Oh, it's good from Price, but when he's playing his peak level stuff, he walks away from that board with at least a 140. Leaving himself 164 instead of 124. 123. That's the difference between 164. winning and losing this leg because now he's not going to take the 164. Hetta does get the look at the 121. 64. Every 121. player who is at this stage of a tournament fancies this. Damon Hetter fancies much against Gerwin Price. Like, play the board. Don't play the man. 43. Like, statistically, Gary Damon Hetter should be 100. wiping the floor with Gerwin Price with the kind of display. But it's a bloke he can't beat. He's the world number one and world champion. He might be about to go 5 4 down here. Yeah. And he yeah, does. And Damon Hetter. Ten leg is Damon to throw first. Gerwin Price should have enjoyed Game. Michael Van Gerwen on the scrap heap here at the Hungarian Darts Trophy, but Damon Hetter just can't find out how to beat him right now. I know how he feels. 
My record against Price is abysmal. And the one time I beat him, what an awful game that was in Gibraltar. Awful. I got the lead. I hit the wall right in the middle of the game. Felt really flat. Oh, I think so. Just didn't have any, any energy, and I thought, oh, no. Well, as you say in darts, oh, no, Bill. That's a hat tip to uh, Bill Davis, the American dart player. And no, at that point, Price accelerated a little bit and started to get vocal, and I thought, oh, not again. Not again. Somehow managed to fall over the line after he'd missed match shots. Right, feels 425. Like might have to do that here. I don't... Even if he does manage to hold his throw here, and he's already in trouble. Can you see him firing in a 12 dart? I don't know the way things are going. I'm not sure he believes he can do it. May not get the chance, of course. So here comes the Iceman. 180! A very bitter taste in Damo's mouth right now. Because he might be thinking, I'm going to have to wait for another attempt to get one over on Price. The world number one right now. 80. But for how much Go longer? One, That's for another time. Because right now he's looking to put a flake in it. Tops, tops. Game <laughs> shot. Round <laughs> match. Going for it. Superb stuff. 180 and a 99 checkout on tops, tops. The last two visits, utter perfection from Gerwin Price. When the previous, what, nine and a half legs were anything but. He was doubting himself, he was changing his flights, he was changing his darts. But the one thing that wasn't changing is that Gerwin Price was beating Damon Hetter because the Australian right now just cannot Ladies and gentlemen, we say goodbye to the heat, Damon Hetter. The world number one and world champion. He's through to the quarterfinals and will play Brendan Dolan for a spot in the semis. We'll turn our attention to the other half of the draw now. Coming up in a moment, Jose de Souza, the Grand Slam champion, taking on the ASP, Nathan Aspinall. And into the quarters, the Iceman going, going price, going. The Iceman doing Peter Wright things there, changing the darts in the middle of the match and after. It was a difference, like, night and day. Yeah, I mean, I've always used those darts forever and I've, I've tried to change. They're the same darts, different color, but just plays tricks with your minds. But, yeah, I played a bit better when I changed, so I'll probably stick with them now. Those two finishes of 112 and 100, those were vital in the context of the game. Yeah, I mean, I was playing rubbish early on and you know, Dima should have should have finished me off early on in the game but I stuck in there as a world champ does and yeah I'm thankful to win that one and I'm thankful to be in the next round. There was really nice support from those Hungarian fans for you today. Any words? Any words for the crowd? Yeah I mean yesterday it was pretty bad but today was amazing so I appreciate it and yeah you got me through that game so thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen your world champion the Iceman Gerwin Price. And the next match we've got coming up after the show.